Shabbatah Shalom. Shabbatah Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, our Father and our Adono, Yache, Meshiaga, Omen, and our Mother, Ruaka Kwadoshi. We are elated to spend this time with you all and hope you enjoy this lesson today. We are going to be looking at Yache, the example for us, the example that He set for how we are to be in this world that we may attain unto the salvation that is in Him. My Ahaya Alahaya. I'm going to start with John chapter 13, verse 13 to 17, please. John chapter 13, verse 13. Ye call me Master and Adono, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Adono, and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is no greater than his Adono, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. He came as a servant in humility. Therefore, we his servants ought to be the same and not walking in pride or lust or any of the works of the flesh because he didn't do it. And he came in humility because his father is most humble of all. Hence, he had to operate in humility as well. That's why he had said, neither he, what was the part about neither he that sent him? Right, uh, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye knew these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Because <laughs> when you understand it, you're like, yeah, I want to do this. Right. I want to attain. I want to be like Ahia. That's right. You want to attain the life. Right. That was verse 17. Yes, it was. Right, and it's interesting because they knew this of old time. The forefathers, the patriarchs knew that Yahshua would be humble and be meek in all righteousness, bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Let's look at the testament of Judah. Please. And after these things shall a star rise to you from Jacobian peace, and a man shall arise from my seed like the son of righteousness walking with the sons of men in meekness and righteousness and no sin shall be found in him you see yachu will be bearing the fruits of the spirit and so therefore we have an example and we are not to sin because our adonai yachu didn't sin right. in him in whom was no guile right? that's right and the heaven shall be opened unto him to pour out the spirit even the blessing of the holy father and he shall pour out the spirit of grace unto you and ye shall be unto him sons in truth. Through his grace making us sons in truth, what would that cause us to do? And ye shall walk in his commandments, first and last. And then we see what will Yache cause us to do by his grace? Keep his commandments. That's right. That's why he said in John 15, if you love me, keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. That's so right. you can see how Yoda, this long time ago, <laughs> understood these things. I have revealed it to him. Now, let's also look at the Testament of Dan to see that the fathers understood these things. This is Dan, Testament of Twelve Patriarchs, chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 2. And verse 8 and 9. Draw near unto Elohim, and unto the angel that intercedes for you. For he is a mediator between Elohim and man. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. All right, verse 8 and 9, please. Keep therefore yourselves, my children, from every evil work, and cast away wrath and all lying, and love truth and long suffering. Dan, of all the time, was telling the children to keep the commandments and right. bear the fruits so of the spirit. spirit. Right. And the things which ye have heard from your father. Do ye also impart to your children that the Savior of the Gentiles may receive you, for he is true and long suffering, right. meek and lowly. Those are all the fruits of the Spirit. Right. Didn't Yahche say in Matthew 11, 28, 30, for I am meek and lowly of heart? You can see how they knew he was going to be as he was, and he came and did it. And we may have the example. Can you finish reading the rest of Dan, verse 9 and 10? So you can learn how he taught people for an example of how we are to teach. And teacheth by his works the law of Elohim. So by his example, we teach others by doing good works in the law 
and the fruits of the Spirit. And now knowing this, what shall we do? Depart therefore from all unrighteousness, and cleave unto the righteousness of Elohim, and your wraith will be saved forever. So we have our admonitions from our Lord's examples of what we ought to do to be delivered. So you see how the scriptures were constantly telling how he was going to be abounded in fruit. Right. And even David, Psalms 45, verse 1 and verse 4, please. Okay. To the chief musician upon Shushanim, for the sons of Korah Mischil, a song of loves, my heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is a pen of a ready writer. There we see. He's talking about the king. He's talking about Yanche. And what about him did he say in verse 4? And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. So we see what made Yanche prosper? Because of truth and meekness and righteousness. Right. So we have an example of how we may prosper to this day. Walking in truth, that is, the spirit of truth, and in meekness, and in all righteousness, keeping the commandments. All right. Now, let's look at Paul's admonition for us to be perfect and walk in his example, too. In Philippians 2, verse 1, 2, 5. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. For there be therefore any consolation in Messiah, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So Paul was wanting to see us all operate in Mishiach, Yache. Right. To see Yache abounding in all of us. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And there we see how we would be abound in this and how the true church is supposed to be abounded in the fruits of the Spirit amongst each other. Sincerity. And, yes, absolutely. That sincerity leads to perfection. Right. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In the true church, is no selfishness. Right. It's about all being on one accord. Taking heed that we don't set a stumbling block on occasion of fall in our brother's way. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Yache. Being encouraged unto this new mindset by Yache's example, let's learn how we ought to walk. Let's look at Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in Adonai, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds. So Paul was telling even the Gentiles, don't continue sinning. Right. And cleave unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past filling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned, Messiah. Now you can see how Paul, that's not the way he taught the Gentiles to right, operate. Right. So you can see, he was teaching them to keep the commandments, the better fruits of the Spirit. That's right. If so be that you have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Yahweh. And when he said being taught by him, we saw literally how Yahweh taught his disciples. Right. He showed himself as a servant, showing himself bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And we know it was even testified in Judah that he wouldn't commit any sin, and he didn't. Right. So we know what Yahweh taught was bearing the fruits of the Spirit and keeping the commandments by believing in him. That's right. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And that word conversation doesn't literally only mean talking. Right. It also means behavior. And being renewed in the spirit of your mind. <laughs> so we see the change Yahweh makes in us. And that you put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. You get the drift now. You right. see that this is Yahweh in you, right? That's right? What verse is that? That was 24. Praise the high. Uh, can you go to 1 John 2, 3 to 6, please? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Right. 
He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The serpent was the one from the beginning that told a woman she didn't have to keep the commandments. So make no marvel that it's the same servant today telling all mankind they don't have to keep the commandments. Right. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of Allah and perfected. Hereby <laughs> know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. We think that's very plain and straightforward for us, then brothers and sisters. And we ought to walk as he walked. Right. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30 to see how he walked. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I think the words of Yacha are pretty straight and clear. Right. Let's take this opportunity and bear the fruits of the Spirit on behalf of our Adana Yache, by our Adana Yache in us, just as the apostles did. They abounded in the fruits of the Spirit through Yache as an example for believers. Therefore, we ought to do the same thing. And there was more exhortation in the book of Clement. Can you read First Clement? Chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Okay. First Clement, chapter 16, verse 1. For Meshiachah is with them that are lowly of mind, not with them that exalt themselves over the flock. So there is exhortation to understand who the true leaders or the true shepherds of the flock are that are being guided by Meshiachah Yache, because they won't exalt themselves over the flock. Right. Because even Peter, when you read the book of Peter, Peter said, don't be masters over the flock, but be examples unto them. So you see how the fruits of the Spirit really helps you identify who the true shepherds really are. The scepter of the majesty of Elohim, even our donor Yache Meshiach, came not in the prop of arrogance or of pride, though he might have done so. But in lowliness of mind, according as the Holy Spirit spake concerning him. So you see how when you see arrogance and pride, when you see the works of the flesh, know for a surety it's not Messiah Yache. First Clement chapter 16, verse 17. Ye see, dearly beloved, what is the pattern that hath been given unto us? For if Adonai was thus lowly of mind, what should we do? Who through him have been wrought under the yoke of his grace. So we see, we saw his pattern. Then it's easy for us to know what should we do? Right. Who has been brought under his yoke? Well, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in Adonai and in the power of his might. Now let's look according to precept. What is that power of might? Because one might think power of might is to try and lift oneself up and right. if it's in something physical. To be valiant. Right. It's more than that. It's something deeper and much stronger. When we look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 11. Colossians chapter 1. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. And what is his glorious power going to lead us on to? Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. So you see what the might really is. Right? The fruits of the Spirit. Right. That's the true might of Allah. That's the true power. Right. We'll know Ahaya is really working in us and increasing us if we see the growth in patience, right. the growth in long suffering, the cheerfulness in affliction. And that's the example that he set for us. Yeah. So now you may have understanding of how we ought to be by how Yache was. I have a good exhortation. And this is personal that we're going to bring to scriptural. I was speaking with a good amount of people and there are people who have a really good heart yet they're not very aware of the fruits of the spirit like that but they go through many afflictions and it takes away the joy like you said you're going through afflictions and cheerfulness when you said it it brought it to me I want to have an exhortation for those people that are quote unquote Walking in the fruits of the Spirit may be in ignorance, or maybe they are walking in the fruits of the Spirit knowingly, 
and counting it all joy going through the tribulation of how people may be treating you, people taking advantage of you, and, and whatever the case is, to endure. You know, see what you got on that. This is James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Doing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Mm -hmm. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. This is what we have to go through, and we are cheerful to do it when we know why it's happening. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahche Mashiach, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, ye notice, he says, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So you're going through all these things, but because you know he's real, you know he's working in you, and you know what hope you have in the end, you rejoice going through all these fiery trials. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently and prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So we see, brothers and sisters, it's joyful when you know who's delivering you, and also when you know who's against you. Right. You made the part of it too. Right. It takes away the feeling of it's someone else doing it to me, but right. when you realize it's just the enemy trying to take away your hope. You know, why me? You know, and, and so on and so forth. And just knowing that it's the enemy trying your faith to see if you're going to stay in it or you're going to fall away. I know we can keep going. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. <laughs>